So we're ready for our chapter seven. In chapter seven, we are going to be looking at what's happening down with the electrons. And that's going to be our main focus, the electronic structure of the atom. But before we can do that, we have to define some of the materials that they use or the ideas that they use to get them to the understanding of electrons. And with that, we have to talk about what quantum mechanical theory is a little bit, and we have to talk about light, because light is what we use to analyze those atoms in that electronic structure. Now, in class, I had you read about, we kind of introduced this concept by reading, but I wanted to reinforce it with a lecture here. So let's, let's go ahead and examine what we need to about waves and then um, about light. So, classical physics, up to this point, we had the notion that any amount of energy is possible. You could have nothing and then you could have a little bit and a little bit more, a little bit more, and it was a continuum. And that works really well on things on the level that we can see and we can work with and we can feel and we can examine um, easily. So that would be classical physics. For example, you can take a car and you can go 50 miles an hour, you can speed up to 70 miles an hour, and you can be any speed in between those. That is a continuum of energy, in a sense. All right, so what uh, Maxwell Planck, he kind of ushered in this whole new idea, and he noticed that when you took an object and you heated it up, you could only get certain amounts of energy released, and it was only multiples of some discrete little bundle, okay? So you could have this much energy released, you could have this much energy released, you could have this much energy released, and it was always a multiple of a certain amount of energy. And that was totally a new concept. So what happened is this kind of ushered in that idea of quantum theory, and he said each one of those little bu bundles of energy would be a quanta of energy, okay, so we have various quanta of energy, and that was the beginning of what we call quantum theory. Quantum theory is really what we use to examine electrons. Now, quantum theory requires multiple semesters of calculus in order to really work with, and obviously for this class, multiple semesters of calculus is not a requirement. Um, algebra is. So we are not going to get to the level of understanding that you might have in an upper level chemistry course, but we will kind of get to the bottom line of what they whittled it down to with their calculus and then handle it on the level we can. Okay, so we have to first understand waves. So let's talk about waves and then we'll stretch it out to talking about waves of light. What is a wave? It is a vibrating disturbance, okay, as we see there the definition, a vibrating disturbance, of, and it's used to transmit energy, okay, transmit energy through space, transmit energy through whatever medium you have there. And when we talk about waves, there are certain characteristics of waves that we need to understand. The first property of a wave that we need to understand is the wavelength. So what is a wavelength? A wavelength is going from one peak to the next peak on successive waves. So we see the image there, the screen of various different wavelengths of um, different waves with different wavelengths. So the wavelength would be from peak to peak. Now it would be exactly the same thing to measure the wavelength from trough to trough. So if I went from here to here and measured that distance, that would be the same wavelength. So it just has to be from one point to the same point on a successive wave. That would be a wavelength. Now we use the symbol lambda, that's a lambda, to represent the, I mean, that is the, the symbol for wavelength. The next property of wave that we have is its amplitude. And amplitude would be the vertical distance from midpoint up to the peak or from midpoint to the trough. It doesn't matter because that'd be the same distance. So we see the wavelength being represented here. I've circled them in red, but it would be the same, I mean not wavelength, sorry, amplitude. That would be the same distance as it is from here to here, and that is the amplitude of the wave. Now we generally associate the amplitude of the wave with the amount of energy that it carries. So if you think about waves on the ocean, you can have a small wave brushing against the ocean, 
okay? And it might knock over a sandcastle. It doesn't carry that much energy. Or you could have a tsunami and you could have a 30 foot tall wave and a really high amplitude and it carries a whole lot more energy with it and can do a whole lot more destruction. It can wipe out a whole city whole town sitting on the edge of the ocean. So the amplitude is what we associate with the energy of a wave. All right, the next property of a wave is the um, frequency. Now frequency is abbreviated with a nu. That's a nu there. In you, all right. Um, it looks like a V to the untrained eye, but it's a new. And frequency is how many waves will pass by a fixed point in a second, okay? Uh, we do it in a second. It doesn't have to be in a second, but we will always do it in a second. So if we watch that goal sitting on the ocean, okay, it's gonna just bob up and down and up and down and up and down. Every time it goes from up back to up would be one cycle of that wave. And if that ocean is going, the waves are going by real fast and it bobs several times in a second, that, you know, that little, Poor little uh, seagull will be bobbing up and down really fast. But, you know, it just sits there and bobs up and down. You count how many go up and down in a second, and that is frequency. Now, frequency is got various units, but the unit of this is a hertz, okay? And a hertz is the number of cycles or the number of waves that go by in a second. When you see a hertz in a problem, I don't want you to necessarily write cycles per second, but you want to translate that as one over seconds. It's the number of waves that will pass through in a second. So these are, this is the usable unit that you're gonna do in calculations so things will cancel the way you need them to. All right, so waves travel at various speeds, whether it's sound waves, whether it is waves on the ocean, whether it is light waves. All waves have their own unique speed, and that speed is a multiple of the wavelength and the frequency. So let's measure a wavelength. Let's say it was measured in meters, okay? If a wavelength was measured in meters and the frequency was one over seconds, Unit-wise, what we have is meters per second. That is a speed. Very much like miles per hour is a speed that we're used to with our cars, right? We go miles per hour. A distance over a time. Well, when you multiply wavelength times frequency, you will get a distance over a time. You will get a speed. Now, we use the symbol U to represent the speed, okay? So that's what that is, um, which is on the same lines as velocity, but not exactly, okay? Because velocity tells you a little bit more about where, where it's going, not just how fast. But anyway, we've got our speed, which is U there. So those are the general properties of a wave. That's all I wanna talk about in this little unit. So we, we know that waves transmit energy. We know that they have wavelengths associated with them, the distance from peak to peak. Amplitude, which we associate with the energy it carries, as well as frequency, which is how many times it goes through a cycle in a second. With that wavelength and that frequency, we can get the speed of the wave. In our next lesson, we're gonna start looking at it specifically for light.